Hello students, how are you all? I hope that you all are good. As we know, the series of motion in a plane is going on and we are successfully finished the two lectures, right? So in a previous lecture that we have discussed about a parallel shifting of vector and how to find the angle between two vectors that we have discussed in a previous lecture, right? So in today's lecture that we are going to discuss about uh, an important concept that is uh, addition of two vectors by using head-to-tail method and uh, triangle law of vectors. Okay. So by using these two methods and we are going to find the resultant of addition of two vectors. Okay. Right. Shall we start the session? Right. So my name is Rakesh Kanganti. Welcome to our beautiful physics channel Rakesh Physics. Okay. Right. So what is the chapter going on? What is the chapter going on? Motion in a plane. Motion in a plane. So what is the class number? Uh, this is a class number 03. Right? Okay. Right. What is the topic today? And the today topic is what? Addition of two vectors. Addition of two vectors and uh, this is a part one lecture okay so in this session that we are going to discuss about a uh, head tail method and a uh, triangle law of vectors so what is the first method hashtag method one so what is the first method to find addition of two vectors that is a uh, head and a tail method head and a uh, tail method Okay, right. Have a look. The statement for head tail method. Statement. So the statement for head and tail method is so join the tail of the join the tail of the next vector next vector with the head of the with the head of the previous vector head of the previous vector okay so this is the first point so the second point for a result for a result join the tail of the the tail of the first vector tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector head of the last vector so what is head what is tail what is joining of head tail what all these things are have a look so we know that what is vector vector is nothing but what now so vector is nothing but a physical quantity having both direction and magnitude such type of quantity is called what vector quantity okay so what is the symbol of vector so this is the symbol of a vector okay so this is called what tail this is called what tail and the, this arrow symbol is called what head okay the tail represents magnitude are you getting all these things that we have discussed in a previous lecture ma okay tail represents magnitude and the head represents what direction okay all okay. right so according to head tail method we have to draw the diagram like this have a look what is the first condition according to first condition join the tail of the next vector join the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector with the head of the previous vector have a look i am taking the two vectors and uh, i am arranging these two vectors like this okay so have a look according to the first condition join the tail of the next vector join the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector this is a next vector and this is a previous vector okay so i just joined the tail of this uh, next vector with the head of the previous vector are you getting have a look and again i'm joining the tail of the next vector again i'm joining the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector so with respect to this vector this vector is what previous vector okay so with respect to this vector this vector is previous vector for this vector this is the next vector for this vector this is the next vector are you getting right okay 
So again, I'm joining the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector. This is what next vector. I'm just joining the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector. Okay. So if you want to find the resultant, for resultant, what we have to do for your result, join the tail of the first vector. Join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. Join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. Then this vector gives what resultant of given vectors. Are you getting any doubt? Okay, very good. I'm just considering this vector having the magnitude of 3 meters and this is a 4 meters magnitude. Again, this vector is a 3 meters magnitude and this vector having 4 meters magnitude. Okay. All right. Have a look. This is a right angle triangle. Okay. This is what? This is a right angle triangle. Have a look here. We have a 90 degrees. Okay. So, I am just considering this uh, right angle triangle and the resultant of this first right angle triangle I am taking as a R1 bar. How much? R1 bar. Have a look. This is a 3 meters and this is a 4 meters. And this is what? Hypotenuse. So, hypotenuse square is equal to side 1 square plus side 2 square. So, resultant square is equal to B square plus 4 square. If square went to that side, it becomes root. So, 9 plus 16, 25, that is equal to 5. So, R1 is equal to how much? 5 meters. Similarly, have a look. This is a right angle triangle. Let us consider this part as R2. Okay. And R2 is equal to how much? Again, under root 3 square plus under root 4 square. So, 16 plus 9, 25, that is equal to how much? Again, 5 meters. So, total vector, total resultant vector, R bar is equal to how much more? 5 plus 5 that is equal to 10 meters. So, likewise, by using the head tail method, we can find the resultant of the two vectors. Are you getting any doubts? Let me have a look an example. Find out the resultant of, find out the resultant of the two vectors, two vectors having magnitudes A bar is equal to 3 meters and uh, B bar is equal to 4 meters. Okay. So, they are given two vectors and they are having the magnitude 3 meters and uh, 4 meters. Okay. By using, by using head and tail method, head and uh, tail method, by using head and uh, tail method. If they are arranged, they are arranged at an angle, at an angle, theta is equal to 90 degrees. This is the first one. And the second one is how much? Theta is equal to, let us take a 120 degrees. Okay. So, this is the question. So, pause the video and try the solution. Okay. So, 3, 2, 1. Pause the video and try the solution. 3, 2, 1. Go. Have a look. I am going to do the solution. In question, what they are asking? Find the resultant of the vectors having the magnitude of 3 meters and 4 meters by using head tail method. If they are arranged at an angle, theta is equal to 90 degrees and uh, theta is equal to 120 degrees. So, at a theta is equal to 90 degrees, I am going to find the first one. Okay. So, they are given A bar is equal to 3 meters and a B bar is equal to 4 meters. And they are saying that by using the head and the tail method. Okay. Right. According to head tail method, what we have to do? Join the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector. Have a look. So, I am just joining the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector. That means, this is A bar is equal to how much? 3 meters. And B bar is equal to how much? 4 meters. And just for your result, what we have to do? We have to join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. Okay, we have to join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. Now it gives what resultant vector that is equal. To have a look. The angle between these two vectors is how much? 90 degrees because they are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so this is of 3 meters and this is a 4 meters and it is a right angle triangle. So R bar is nothing but what? Hypotenuse. So hypotenuse square is equal to what? Side 1 square plus side 2 square under root. So, under root of 3 square plus 4 square, again you will get root over 25. What is the value of root over 25? 5. Okay. So, R bar is equal to how much? 5 meters. So, this is in the case of theta is equal to 90 degrees. Are you getting 
Any doubts? Okay. Second one. I am going to take uh, an angle theta is equal to 120 degrees. Again, A bar is equal to 3 meter and B bar is equal to how much ma? 4 meters. Okay. Right. Let's see. Draw the diagram. So we have to join the tail of the next vector with the head of the previous vector. So now they are at uh, 120 degrees. B bar is equal to how much? 4 meters. And the angle between them is how much? Theta is equal to 100. 20 degrees. Now, for your resultant, we have to join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. Now, this is what resultant. Then, how to find the resultant? By using which formula we have to find the resultant vector? It is not a right angle triangle to use a Pythagoras theorem. Hypotenuse square is equal to side one square plus side two square. Okay. So, if it is a 90 degrees, then it is easy to find. But here, 120 degrees are there. So now these two are not a perpendicular to each other. Now we are unable to apply Pythagoras theorem. Then how to find the resultant? How to find the resultant? Is it difficult or not? Yes, it is difficult to find resultant vector. So that's why this head and tail method is not applicable for what? For the angles other than 90 degrees. That means. 45, 50, 55, 65, 85, 95, 125. Okay, so for all these angles, this head-to-tail method is not valid. Okay, so to reduce this problem, we can use another method that is triangle law of vectors. What is that? Triangle law of vectors. So this head-to-tail method is failed because because what more? It is applicable. Only when the angle between two vectors is how much? 90 degrees only. Otherwise, it is difficult to find a resultant. To find a result. Okay, are you getting? Well. So pause the video and write the notes. Three, two, one, go. Right. So let us see the second method to find the resultant of two vectors. What is that? Have a look. Hashtag method two. So which method it is? Triangle law of vector. Addition. Any law vector addition. Okay, sir. What is this, sir? Have a look. Statement. So the statement for triangle law vector addition is: if the two vectors, if the two vectors are taken in order, taken. In order to represent to represent the two sides of a triangle, two sides of a triangle. Okay. So what they are taken? If the two vectors are taken in order to represent to represent. The two sides of a triangle. Right. Have a look from the statement. I am taking the two vectors in order. Okay. So this is the a bar vector, and we have to take the b bar vector in order. Have a look. And uh, this is a b bar vector, and these two vectors in order. Have a look. Tail head. Tail head. This is called. This arrangement is called what? Taking the two vectors in order. So after head of the first vector, we have to take the tail of the next vector. Now these two vectors in what? In order, okay. So I am taking the two sides of a triangle like this. Two sides of a triangle, right? So for their sum, for their sum, or for the resultant vector, for the resultant, for the resultant, take the another vector. Take the another vector. As in 
take the another vector as a third side third side of the triangle third side of the triangle okay in reverse order in reverse order are you getting so for their sum or for their result and we have to take the another vector as a third side of the triangle as a third side of the triangle in reverse order have a look so these two are in order reverse order means taking the third vector in reverse order have a look so this is called a reverse order okay so and uh, this gives what and this vector gives the resultant of these two vectors are you getting so first we have to take the two vectors in order has to represent the two sides of a triangle okay so for the resultant we have to take the third vector as a third side of the triangle in reverse order in reverse order now this vector gives what resultant of a bar and b bar vector are you getting okay right i am going to do the solution have a look from this point i am just drawing the straight line or a perpendicular line okay like this i am just drawing the perpendicular line so and uh, i am just uh, extending this uh, a bar vector so i am just extending this a bar vector okay so we have drawn the perpendicular line and we are extended the a bar vector have a look this is what 90 degrees now here a right angle triangle is formed okay so i am taking uh, this angle i am taking this angle as a theta this angle as a theta now i am going to give the name for the triangle i am going to give the name for the triangle so this is called is o p q r o p q r have a look i am going to do the calculation from triangle from triangle p q r from the triangle p q r from the triangle what p q r have a look what is p q r so this is the p q r triangle have a look like this so this is p this is q this is r and this is 90 degrees so this side this side is what so b bar vector okay and this is an angle theta we are taken so from this triangle i am going to write out cos theta what is cos theta cos theta is nothing but adjacent side by hypotenuse adjacent side by hypotenuse from this triangle what is adjacent side so whatever the side towards an angle theta whatever the side towards an angle theta is called adjacent side that is a qr divided by what is hypotenuse pq so cos theta is equals to qr by pq what is the value of pq so pq is nothing but what b bar so cos theta is equals to we got r by b bar so from this qr is equals to what mark so if you bring this b bar to this side it becomes b bar cos theta qr is equals to what b bar cos theta so what is the value of side of qr so this is what b bar cos theta so this is what qr is equals to b bar cos theta are you getting now okay so for the side of pr i am taking the sin theta so what is sin theta sin theta is nothing but opposite side by hypotenuse so pr by what is pq pq is nothing but b bar okay like right. from this we can write out sin theta is equals to what more pr by b bar so from this pr side pr is equals to what b bar sin theta b bar sin theta so what is the value of side of the pr so b bar sin theta and we got this side value is how much b bar sin theta are you getting are you getting ma any doubts okay i'm just finding the resultant of the two vectors now okay so the resultant of result end of the two vectors the two vectors is given by is given by okay have a look how to find the value of r bar have a look go p q this a large triangle big triangle okay so o p q have a look the triangle okay so o p q o p q have a look the triangle o q is like this right are you getting o p q o p 
is like this. So what is OP? Result end vector R bar. What is OQ? OQ. Total length of the base of the triangle. So from here to here, A bar. From here to here, B bar cos theta. Now the total base of the triangle. How much? A bar plus B bar cos theta. A bar plus B bar cos theta. Now what is PQ? PQ is nothing but what? Ma? So B bar sin theta. B bar sin theta. Are you getting any doubt? Just take the big triangle OPQ. OPQ. R bar. A bar plus B bar cos theta. Total length of the base of the triangle. And this is what? B bar sin theta. Okay? Right. Have a look. Now it is look like a right angle triangle. Not look like a right angle triangle. It is a right angle triangle. Okay. What we have to find? We have to find the resultant of these two vectors. In case of right angle triangle. So hypotenuse square is equal to side 1 square plus side 2 square. What is hypotenuse? Resultant square is equal to what is side 1 square? A bar plus B bar cos theta whole square plus what is side 2 square? B bar sin theta whole square. Are you getting any doubts? Okay. So R square is equal to A plus B whole square. A plus B. So in the place of B, we have B bar cos theta. So A plus B whole square formula is what? A square plus B square. B is nothing but what? B bar cos theta. That means B square cos square theta. B A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. Bracket close. Now here we have B bar sin theta whole square. Then we will get B square sin square theta. So B square sin square theta. Okay. So that is equal to R bar square is equal to A square plus here b square cos square theta is there here b square sin square theta is there i'm just taking off b square common so then we will get cos square theta plus sin square theta are you getting i'm just taking the common b square okay so cos square theta plus sin square theta plus here we have a 2 a b cos theta 2 a b cos theta okay so now what is a sin square theta plus cos square theta? What is the value of cos square theta plus sin square theta? Or sin square theta plus cos square theta? How much? 1. So now this value becomes how much? Ma? 1. Okay. So R square is equal to A square plus B square into 1. B square plus 2AB cos theta. Okay. It's a vector quantity. We have to represent a vector quantity with arrow symbol. Okay. So this is also a vector quantity. So from this, finally, resultant vector R bar, R bar is equal to, if square went to that side, it becomes root over A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. So this is the resultant of the given two vectors. This is what the resultant of the given two vectors. Okay. Right. Are you understood? Any problem? Huh? Okay, very good. So pause the video and write the notes. 3, 2, 1, go. Right. So what is the resultant of two vectors we got? R bar is equal to what now? Under root of A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. Okay. So we got this formula. Are you getting? Okay, very good. Now we have to find the direction of the resultant vector. How to find the direction of the resultant vector? Have a look. Finding, finding the direction of direction of resultant vector. Resultant vector. Right. Right. To find the direction of the resultant vector. I am taking the vector A bar. I am taking the vector A bar as a reference line. I am taking vector A bar as a reference line. A reference line. Okay. So from this reference line, I am considering this R bar vector is at an angle alpha. Is at an angle alpha. Now, the vector R bar is at an angle alpha 
from a bar vector from a bar vector therefore the direction of the direction of r bar is given by is given by tan alpha given by what tan alpha so tan alpha gives the direction of the resultant vector to find the tan alpha i am taking the triangle i am taking the triangle from triangle o p q from triangle o p q have a look tan alpha is equals to tan alpha is equals to from this triangle so what is tan alpha so tan theta is nothing but what ma opposite side by adjacent side okay so tan alpha is equals to opposite side b bar sin theta what is opposite side b bar sin theta divided by adjacent side what is the adjacent side we got a bar plus b bar cos theta what is adjacent side a bar plus b bar cos theta are you getting right very good so this is the direction of the resultant vector this is this this is the direction of the resultant vector okay right okay right so let us see an example so this is an example number 1 if vector a bar is equal to b magnitude is how much 3 meters let us say meters so the vector b bar is equal to 4 meters vector b bar is equal to 4 meters if the angle between if the angle between them is number 1 Theta is equals to 90 degrees. Number two, theta is equal to 120 degrees. Number three, theta is equals to 150 degrees. Theta is equals to 150 degrees. Then find the resultant vector. Find the resultant vector and the direction of Direction of let us say this is a question number one. This is a question number two. Direction of R bar. I also find the the direction of R bar. Okay, right. So I'm going to do the first one and the second one and the third one is for homework. You have to solve and the comment your answer in a comment section. Okay, right. So the first one they are given A bar is equals to three meters and now second one B is equals to four meters and the angle T is equals to how much they are given? 90 degrees okay so how to find the resultant vector by using triangles law so r bar is equals to and the root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta okay right sir so that is equals to and the root of what is a 3 square what is b 4 square plus 2 into 3 into 4 into Cos into 90 degrees. Cos 90 degrees. Have a look. Two. This is what? Two into a. What is the value of a? Three. What is the value of b? Four into theta is equals to 90. So what is the value of cos 90? The value of cos 90 is zero. What is the value of cos 90? Ma? Zero. That is equals to under root of. So zero into something. This total term becomes zero. So what is the value of three square? Nine. What is the value of four square? 16 that is equals to 16 plus 9 root over 25 that is equals to 5 meters so r bar is equals to how much ma 5 meters are you getting any doubts right now what we have to find we have to find the direction so second one direction so for the direction what is the formula we have tan alpha is equals to b bar sin theta by a bar plus b bar cos theta what is the value of b bar the value of b bar is how much 4 meters into sin theta is equals to how much ma 90 degrees divided by what is the value of a bar 3 plus what is the value of b 4 into cos theta theta is equals to 90 degrees the value of cos 90 0 it gets cancelled out 0 into something 0 so this is equals to sin 90 the value of sin 90 is 1 1 into 4 4 divided by 3 so we got our tan alpha is equals to how much 4 by 3 from this alpha is equals to tan inverse of 4 by 3 so what is the value of tan inverse of 4 by 
in a three four five triangle i told you that okay this is this is a three four five it is 37 and this is 83 and this is 90 degrees i told you in a trigonometric formulas concept okay so from this sin 37 is equals to how much ma opposite side by hypotenuse cos 37 is equals to how much cos 37 4 by 5 adjacent side by hypotenuse already we have discussed okay tan 37 what is tan 37 sin 37 by cos 37 5 5 cancel out we get a 3 by 4 okay so what is sin 53 the value of sin 53 is equals to opposite side by hypotenuse 4 by 5 cos 53 what is the value of cos 53 adjacent side 3 by 5 All these things that we have discussed in a basic mathematics used in physics concepts, ma. Okay, right. So, what is the value of tan 53? Value of tan 53 is what? Sin 53 divided by cos 53. Phi phi get cancelled out. 4 by 3. So, what is the value of tan inverse of 4 by 3? How much, ma? 53 degrees. Are you getting? Alpha is equal to how much? 53 degrees. So that means the direction of r bar from a bar vector. The direction of r bar vector. From a bar vector is equals to how much? 53 degrees. Did you understand this? Tan alpha is equals to 4 by 3. So tan alpha is equals to we got 4 by 3. What is 4 by 3? 4 by 3 is nothing but what? Ma, we can write 4 by 3 as a tan 53. We can write uh, like this also. So this is what tan alpha. So tan tan get cancelled out. Alpha is equals to 53. If you are not understood this, you can do like this also. Okay? So tan alpha is equals to 4 by 3. What is the value of 4 by 3? 4 by 3 is nothing but tan 53. So tan alpha is equal to tan 53. Tan tan gets cancelled out, and alpha is equal to 53 degrees. Are you getting? Okay. So for 120 and 150, you have to do as a homework. Okay. And uh, place your answer in a comment section. Okay. Right. So pause the video and write all these things. Three, two, one. Go. Right. So let us see the small concept, important concept. We have a one previous year question on this concept. Okay. Concept. Have a look. Here I am taking one point. Let us consider this point as a O. O is a point. Now, on this a point O, the three forces, the three forces. Let us consider. This is a F1, and a, this is F2 force. And uh, this F3 force. These three forces are acting on this particle to keep their particle in equilibrium. Are you getting? So these three forces are acting on this particle or a point to keep that point in equilibrium. Have a look. The three forces. The three forces are acting on a particle. Acting on a particle to keep to keep that particle in equilibrium in equilibrium. Okay, I'm just taking these three forces F1, F2, and F3 are the sides of a triangle. I'm taking these three forces F1, F2, F3 as a sides of a triangle. Have a look. Let us consider. Let us consider the three forces. Three forces are as a three sides. Three sides of a triangle. Three sides of a triangle. Have a look. The F3 force is in a downward direction. It is acting in a downward direction. This is a F3, and a F1 force is acting in this direction. Okay, F1 force acting in this direction, and F2 force and F2 force is acting in this direction. Right, I'm just uh, taking these three forces as a uh, three sides of a triangle in order. Have a look. I'm just taking these forces as a uh, three sides of a triangle in order. So head the tail, head the tail, head the tail in order. So let us consider this point is a uh, A, B, C. This is what A B C triangle. Now. important 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 the magnitudes the magnitudes 
of the forces magnitude of the forces corresponding to corresponding to the sides corresponding to the sides of a triangle corresponding to the sides of a triangle having having equal ratios equal ratios that means the magnitudes of the forces corresponding to the sides of a triangle having the equal ratio sides means ab bc ca so then we can write f1 by ab is equals to f2 by this is what this is the force f2 okay this is what this is the force f2 f1 by ab is equals to f2 by ca f2 by ca is equals to f3 by bc f3 by bc are you getting so the magnitudes of the forces corresponding to the sides of a triangle having the equal ratios having the equal ratios are you getting any doubt okay so please note this formula important formula okay right have a look note this is also an important note so from this note we have a m set previous year problem okay right. so to keep to keep a particle in equilibrium in equilibrium equilibrium the sum of the sum of two forces sum of two forces is must be is must be greater than greater than or greater than or equal to greater than or equal to the third force greater than or equal to the third force are you getting so these three forces are acting on this point o or a particle to keep it in equilibrium to keep it in equilibrium the sum of the two forces the sum of the two forces is must be greater than the third force or is must be equal to the third force are you getting sum of any two forces is must be greater than third one or equals to third one then the particle is in equilibrium are you getting right let's we see one previous year question on this concept okay right so pause the video and write the notes 3 2 1 go so this is the previous year mcet examination question based on this concept okay so what is the question they are given have a look which of the following sets of forces acting simultaneously on a particle to keep it in equilibrium okay so what they are given they are given three sets of forces okay in every option they are given three sets of forces what they are asking which of the following sets of forces which of the following sets of forces acting simultaneously on a particle acting simultaneously on a particle to keep this particle in equilibrium to keep the particle in equilibrium so whatever the sets of forces they are given they must follow this condition what is this condition to keep the particle in equilibrium the sum of any two forces the sum of any two forces is greater than or equals to third one have a look which option follows this condition okay right solution i am taking the first option that is what a so they are given f1 is equals to 3 newtons f2 is equals to 5 newtons and f3 is equals to 10 newtons so what we have to check we have to add any two forces i'm just adding f1 plus f2 what is f1 mark 3 plus what is f2 5 right we got a sum of any two forces f1 plus f2 is equals to how much 8 we got sum of any two forces is equals to 8 so whatever the force here we got 8 newtons so f1 plus f2 is equals to 8 newtons is less than is less than f3 is less than what f3 what is f3 10 newtons so what is our condition to keep a particle in equilibrium the sum of two forces the sum of two forces is must be greater is must be greater or equal 
have a look whatever the sum of the forces we got is less than the third force is less than the third force so this option is wrong are you getting any doubts okay let us we check out option b in option b they are given f1 is equals to 4 newtons f2 is equals to 7 newtons f3 is equals to 12 newtons what we have to do we have to add any two forces so i'm just adding f1 plus f2 what is f1 plus f2 4 plus 7 that is equals to 11 okay now we have to check whether this sum of the two forces is greater or equals to third one so f1 plus f2 is equals to we got 11 and f3 we have 12 that means f1 plus f2 is less than f3 because f3 is equals to 12 so either it is greater or equal we must get this condition but here we have less than condition so this is also wrong option are you getting easy one okay don't get attention so i am going to check the third option so they are given now f1 is equals to 2 newtons and f2 is equals to 6 newtons and f3 is equals to 5 newtons what we have to check we have to add any two forces i am just adding f1 plus f2 f1 is equals to 2 newtons and f2 is equals to 6 newtons so f1 plus f2 f1 plus f2 is equals to how much 8 so f1 plus f2 is equals to 8 we got f1 plus f2 is equals to 8 and what is f3 f3 is equals to 5 so sum of the two forces is greater than is greater than third force that is 5 are you getting now this condition is exist greater than so sum of the two forces is greater than third one this condition is exist now we have to check we have to add up 6 plus 5 Six plus five. I'm just taking off F two plus F three is equal to six plus five. What is six plus five? Eleven. Are you getting one? So eleven. So F two plus F three is greater than F two plus F three is greater than F one. So sum of the two forces. How much it is? Eleven. Which is greater than F one? What is F one? Two. So sum of the two forces. E is greater than third one, so F2 plus F3 is equals to 11, which is greater than F1. What is F1? 2. Then it follows equilibrium condition. So our answer is what? Ma, C is our option. Are you getting any doubts? Easy one, na? Okay. Right. 8 plus 5. How much? 8 plus 2. 10 plus 3. 13. So sum of these two forces E is greater than third one. Okay. This condition is exist. So the sum of the two forces E plus 10 now. How much? 18, which is less than 5. So this option is not exist because sum of these two forces is less than 5. What we need? We have to get greater force. Right. So pause the video and write the solution. Pause the video and write the solution. 3, 2, 1, go. Right. So this is the end of the today's lecture. I hope that you enjoyed this lecture and you are understood the concept of triangle law of vector addition okay. so practice all these things so we got the formula for addition of two vectors r bar is equals to under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta okay so and uh, we got the formula for direction of a resultant vector tan alpha is equals to b bar sin theta by a plus b cos theta okay and we have solved uh, one problem i explained one problem and i given two homework problems so please do that homework problem and uh, place the answer in comment section okay so this is a small concept about uh, equilibrium of a point when the three forces are acting and we have one concept here and uh, this is a previous year question on the concept so please practice and keep studying and uh, keep watching my lectures to get a better concepts okay right so this is rakesh kanganti signing out stay tuned jai hind